Welcome to Gospel Greetings number 122, recorded live from our Power to Change staff conference in beautiful Whistler, BC. 500 staff from all of our ministries, including Family Life, Athletes in Action, Student Ministry, Christian Embassy, Gain, Connected Stream, and of course, Leader Impact. Today we continue in our series on the book, The 10 Second Rule by Claire de Graff. You'll remember that last week we discussed chapter four called Why Our Simple Obedience Matters. In that chapter, de Graff talked about how the little things in life that we view as pointless are so often for a greater good. God has us do all these little things that all of these will lead to something great. It's these little acts of obedience in life that we can't really see the end result of, and they end up actually helping shape who we become as Christians and our impact on the world around us. You remember the 10 second rule? Just do the next thing you're reasonably certain Jesus wants you to do and commit to it immediately in the next 10 seconds before you change your mind. This week, we will be continuing on to chapter five called The Power of Small Beginnings from Luke 8, 18. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have, will be taken from them. This chapter has must, much to do with having faith in God and being willing to test our faith. When we feel like God is calling us to do something, we need to do it instantly, or else we'll come up with many excuses of why we can't do what he's telling us to do. One of the main reasons we don't do these things is because of what others will think. Many things we do in, the life, in, our, in this life will go unnoticed. And what we do when nobody is watching is much more important than what we do when others are actually looking. Claire says, when you're reasonably certain Jesus is asking you to do something, do it immediately. Waiting gives you a chance to overthink these impressions of God, providing fertile soil for disobedience making it just that much easier to say no to God again the next time he speaks. One of our guys heard last week's post, and uh, his name's Matthias. He eats regularly at a wings place. Over time, he's gotten to know the server who remembers his order, etc. And, and uh, she has had several setbacks with the power outages around our windstorms in Ottawa, appliance failures, etc. He learned about her enjoying opera music and having a crashed computer, which she couldn't afford to fix. He decided right then to do something about this. As she doesn't earn very much money and she and her fiance were just scraping by. The next day he presented her with a five CD set of the best opera music he had around and a refurbished computer. She was just blown away. The next time he went in, she was of course very happy, but the best part was that she stated that she had been praying for him and thanking God that there were nice people out there. You see, he didn't know that she was a Christian. He did this because God nudged him and it's the right thing to do. The Lord does work wonders. As it turns out, he was helping a fellow Christian without realizing it. Like the graph says, most of the hard work it takes to build a life that truly pleases God usually goes unnoticed by nearly everyone except God and a waitress. Do you see why your simple obedience matters?